Welcome to Cheap Cheese. Ready for a jolt? Every day we consume about 2.25 billion cups of coffee worldwide. That's right, billion with a B. In a month that amounts to a staggering 67.5 billion cups. It's clear we love our Java, folks. Now let's talk about the nations leading this caffeine-fueled charge. The United States, Brazil, and Germany are the top consumers of coffee. But, it's the small country of Finland where you'll find the most coffee guzzlers per capita. They certainly know how to keep warm. On to the producers. The cheapest coffee beans come from the vast landscapes of Vietnam. For just a dollar you can get around one kilogram of Robusta beans. They're the backbone of many an instant coffee cup, and the reason you can enjoy your daily jolt without breaking the bank. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the most expensive coffee beans hailing from the lush highlands of Panama. These aren't your everyday beans, folks. We're talking about the elusive geisha variety which can cost a whopping $350 per kilogram. That's 350 times more expensive than our bargain beans from Vietnam. Why such a huge price difference, you ask? Well, it comes down to quality, rarity, and the cost of production. The geisha beans are hand-picked, sun-dried, and meticulously processed to preserve their unique flavor profile. In comparison, robusta beans are mass-produced, often machine-harvested, and less labor-intensive. Interestingly, the countries that consume the most expensive beans aren't necessarily the ones you'd expect. Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea are the top consumers of these pricey beans, valuing quality and unique flavors over cost. And there you have it, a quick tour of the world's coffee habits. From the robust, cost-effective beans of Vietnam to the rare, pricey geisha beans of Panama, the world of coffee is as diverse as it is fascinating. Now let's dive into the fascinating world of coffee production. Ever wonder how your morning cup of joe comes to be? It all starts with a bean. Let's dive into the journey of the humble, affordable coffee bean. This tale begins in the sun-drenched fields of countries like Brazil and Vietnam, which are the top producers of these beans. Picture massive plantations with rows upon rows of coffee plants, all grown in abundance to keep up with the world's insatiable appetite for caffeine. What makes these beans so affordable? It's a combination of large-scale farming, mechanization, and low-cost labor. Picture vast plantations that stretch as far as the eye can see, where coffee plants grow under the tropical sun. These large-scale operations allow for the production of beans on a massive scale, which brings down the cost per bean. Mechanization plays a significant role too. From the planting of the seedlings to the harvesting of the ripe cherries, machines are heavily involved. This automation reduces the need for manual labor which in turn, lowers the cost of production. Yet, despite the mechanization, human hands are still crucial to the process. In countries where these beans are produced, labor costs are often low, which further reduces the cost of production. Workers toil under the sun, picking the ripe cherries, sorting them, and preparing them for the next stage of the journey. The beans then go through a process known as wet milling, where the pulp is removed, and the beans are left to ferment in water. After this they are dried, either in the sun or in large drying machines, before they are sorted and bagged ready for export. But the journey doesn't end there. The beans then make their way across oceans and continents to coffee roasters who transform these green beans into the rich brown beans we know and love. These beans are then ground, brewed, and poured into your cup, ready to jolt you awake with their caffeinated goodness. So that's the journey of a cheap coffee bean. But what about the pricey ones? From the farm to your cup, the journey of an expensive coffee bean is quite the adventure. Whereas the production of cheap coffee beans is a massive industrial process, high-end beans take a more intimate route. It all starts on small-scale farms, often nestled in the lush mountains of places like Ethiopia or Panama. Unlike their cheaper counterparts, these beans aren't grown on vast flat fields but rather on hilly terrains, where the climate and altitude contribute to a unique and rich flavor profile. The care and attention given to these beans are meticulous. Farmers handpick each bean, ensuring that only the ripest and best make the cut. It's a labor-intensive process, but it's all part of the magic that makes these beans so special. Once the beans are harvested, they're then processed, usually using the wet method. This involves soaking the beans to remove the pulp, followed by a drying phase. The result? A cleaner, more refined taste that sets these beans apart from the crowd. But the journey isn't over yet. The next stop is the roaster. Unlike the mass roasting that cheaper beans undergo, expensive beans are often roasted in small batches by artisanal roasters. 
This allows for precise control over the roasting process, which can greatly influence the taste of the coffee. Each batch is carefully monitored, with the roaster making minute adjustments to ensure the beans reach their full flavor potential. Finally, these beans make their way to you, the consumer. Whether you're brewing them at home or enjoying a cup at your local cafe, you're experiencing the result of a painstaking process that prioritizes quality over quantity. That's why these beans command a higher price, but is the difference in taste really worth it? Well, that's a question only your taste buds can answer. And if they could talk, they might just tell you that the journey of an expensive coffee bean is worth every penny. Cheap or expensive, every coffee bean tells a story. Now let's dive into the tale of two beans, the economical and the luxurious, and explore the reasons behind their price disparity. First, let's talk about the cheap beans. These beans are usually grown in countries like Vietnam and Brazil, where the cost of labor is low. They're cultivated in large farms, often spanning thousands of acres. The beans are harvested mechanically which, while efficient, doesn't discriminate between ripe and unripe beans. This can lead to a blend of flavors in the final cup, contributing to its lower price. On the other hand, expensive coffee beans, such as those from Panama's Esmeralda estate, are grown on smaller farms with meticulous attention to detail. The beans are hand-picked only when they're at peak ripeness, ensuring a consistent and superior flavor. This labor-intensive process justifies the higher price tag. Statistically speaking, the price difference is staggering. Let's say a pound of low-cost Robusta beans from Vietnam might cost around $5. In contrast, a pound of high-quality Geisha beans from Panama could set you back as much as $350. That's a price difference of 70 times. This disparity isn't just about the labor and harvesting methods. It also relates to the bean variety, growing conditions, and processing methods. For instance, high-end beans often undergo a meticulous washing process to remove impurities, while cheaper beans are typically processed using the dry method, which is less labor-intensive but can result in a less refined flavor. And who's buying these expensive beans? Well, surprisingly, it's not just the coffee connoisseurs of the Western world. In fact, countries like China and South Korea have developed a taste for high-end beans, contributing to their global demand. So, the next time you sip your coffee, take a moment to appreciate the journey of the bean, from the farm to your cup. Whether it's a bargain buy or a luxury indulgence, every bean has its own unique tale to tell. Coffee, it's more than just a beverage, it's a global affair. Now let's take a trip around the world and see who's sipping the high-end brew. You might be surprised to find that the countries consuming the most expensive coffee beans aren't always the ones you'd expect. First stop, Japan. Despite its renowned tea culture, Japan has a love affair with coffee that's hard to ignore. They're one of the top consumers of the priciest beans, proving that quality matters, even in the land of the rising sun. Next, we head to the United States where coffee is practically a way of life. With specialty coffee shops on every corner, it's no surprise that Americans are willing to shell out for the good stuff. They know that the best things in life, like coffee, don't come cheap. Across the pond, we find the Europeans. Known for their discerning tastes, countries like Italy, France, and Germany are also top consumers of high-end coffee beans. Whether it's a robust Italian espresso or a delicate French cafe au lait, these countries appreciate the fine art of coffee making. And let's not forget about our friends down under. Australians are serious about their coffee and they're not afraid to pay top dollar for it. Their coffee culture is all about quality over quantity, and it shows in their preference for the most expensive beans. But what makes these beans so pricey? It's a combination of factors from the type of plant and where it's grown to how it's processed and prepared. Each step of the way adds value, and that's reflected in the price tag. In the end, it's all about personal preference. Whether you're sipping on a $2 cup or a $20 brew, it's the enjoyment of that warm, comforting drink that truly matters. And there you have it, folks. That's the tale of the coffee bean. Subscribe for more interesting facts and stay caffeinated.